This episode of The Honeydew is brought to you by ExpressVPN. More on that later. Let's get into the do. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it, Night Pan Studios. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Uh, RyanSickler.com and the HoneydewPodcast.com are where you can go for any and all information related to myself or the shows. All right. I record here at the Santa Monica Music Center. Uh, so if you live in LA and you need musical instruments or lessons for your kids, you go to SantaMonicaMusic.com, use the code Honeydew. They'll waive the registration fee and they'll give you one free lesson when you sign up for a package. All right. Intro is shorter now, y'all. And uh, if you don't know what we do over here, we highlight the lowlights over here. We laugh in the face of adversity. We're showing a little bit of light on that darkness. These are strong people. These are the stories behind the storytellers. Today, first guest here for the first time. Very excited to have him on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Felipe Esparza, everybody. All right. What's up? What's up? <laughs> You look good and you look good, man. Thank you, man. All right, wait, where can everybody get that? Please, pl listen, plug and promote everything. Your social media, your podcast, your merch, all of it, Felipe. Felipesworld.com, F-E-L-I-P-E-S, world.com. Get my face mask, tour, merch, everything. Great. Felipesworld.com. All right, and what's your podcast? My podcast is What's Up, Fool Podcast. We're already at... 315th episode. Damn, are you really at 315? Yes. Holy shit, congrats. I know that's a that's a labor of love right there. Yes, man. Yeah, that's a lot. We've been doing it for a while now since... Fuck, I don't even know how many years. That's. I mean, I know we did about 350, something like that with the Crafties. It ended up being like seven and a half years. That's a... You're you're in, dude. I don't know how. I mean, we did one a week. I don't know if you do. We more do than one that. a week, dude. That's congrats on that. There's yes. there's a lot of people that shit. I, I started a second one already. That's good for you, dude. I know um, my wife and that we had started one together too. It was called um, Enchilada Casserole Podcast <laughs> because my wife is white, yeah. you know, and that was more of a personal podcast. That when we dealt more, you know, personal stuff like the honeydew. You know stuff that you wouldn't talk on a on a dude podcast, you know. Yeah, exactly. Or a sports podcast. We talked about my because my wife and I, we were trying to have a baby. You know when we started the podcast, so along the way, like we had a a miscarriage, so we dealt with a miscarriage on our the enchilada podcast. We didn't talk about it in the West Hope podcast. But we talked about it on the enchilada, and um, we tried one time, and I remember going to the hospital, and we were so excited. And um, they, I uh, man, you, like I had kids before, but I was not like present, you know, like a, like a full dad, you know. So that's what we're gonna talk I about. I was in, involved in the, in like the nothing, you know. So can I ask you real quick? Were you? We'll get. We're gonna come back yeah. to that. I'll come back to it. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so you're at um, the hospital. We're at the hospital, and then you know how many months pregnant? Three, four. Okay. Then you felt the heartbeat. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And then you go back like two weeks later and there's no bump bump. You know, there's no bump. And like the baby was already passed away inside, you know, and so we have to go through that, you know, and like having a miscarriage was like um giving birth the same way, you know. So that was the that was that time. And then it happened again a second time. Then the third one You had two miscarriages. Three. Three? Oh, three, man. I'm man. sorry. It was three, and oh. uh, it was fucked up. And uh, the third one was the toughest because um, when um, you, when you have a miscarriage, you know, you have to um, get the baby out because the baby is not going to live. It's already dead. You know, it's three months, not even a – it's a fetus, you know. It's done. And we went to this ch this hospital called um, um, Praise Ch – I don't know the, the name of the hospital. It's in Silmar. I, I don't know the name of it, but it's a Catholic hospital. And very, I didn't know that at this hospital, they couldn't do the miscarriage because of religious oh, reasons. Yeah, that's right. But we had to prove that the baby was already um, not living to take him out because, of, you know, that's the religion. But it was 
tough, man, because so my wait, wife had that to get a hospital because of the religious, the Catholic beliefs. They make you prove the baby is passed before yeah. they'll remove they it from abortion, her body. They don't do abortion. They don't want to be involved right. in none okay. of that. So they had to um, get. I don't know, man. They had to call religious people and approve it to take the the fetus out, and. Um, then it thought, then I we found out at the same time that my wife had to get a hysterectomy. Oh no! So man, it was they were man. piling so down. There goes the opportunity. Yeah, man. Oh. So that we lost everything right there. Like no more, we couldn't have a kid, and um, it was kind of fucked up. It was like during Christmas time. This last year, like three years ago. Three years. Two ago. years. Three years ago, man. Yeah. And what did that? How did that change you? Oh man, it just like made me realize we're not gonna have a kid. But you have how many? I have three of my own already. All right, yeah, you have three kids. And I have my. Kids. How old are you now? My kids are. Um, my oldest kid was born in '88, I think. So how old are you? How old are you right now? I'm in fifty. You're fifty. Yeah. Damn, you look Felipe. Shit, I yeah. would have never guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never guess that. <laughs> That's right, cocksuckers. <laughs> It's not about the hee hees and the ha has. You gotta put up lotion. Oh shit! All right. So, how old were you when you had oh, your man. first kid? When I had my first kid, I was like seventeen okay, or eighteen you're, years you're old. Young. All right. And then, how old when you had your second kid? Twenty. And then, how old the third one? Twenty-four. I don't so know. I don't remember. All right. Man. And are they all with the same lady? No, different moms. All different moms. Okay. I have one with two kids. And one with one kid. Okay. And you were estranged from your kids? You split from them or oh, yeah, you were we, separated um, from them? What happened? We were living in like in um, this the, the Pico Aliso housing projects, you know. <clears throat> That's where I grew up. Yeah. Uh, man, I had a great, you know, like I had a great childhood, you know. I had a lot of you friends. You also had a wild childhood. Yeah. You did. I had a lot of friends. And we broke up, you know, um, I was not spending a lot of time at home, so she ended up like meeting someone else, like cheating on me, like behind my back for about a year and a half, like really cheating. When man. you already had a kid together too? Yeah, we already had two kids together. Oh, two at that point. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I was getting into a lot of trouble, like a lot of trouble. Like I remember um, I couldn't be home a lot because something would happen in my neighborhood and they would just, you know, how they would go after the usual suspects, so they knew like who to go. You were a usual suspect. Yeah, even though I didn't do nothing, <laughs> I just you I, just get pulled in. Huh? I stood out in the crowd because I had because my hair was a short, and um, I wore Vans or instead of instead of Converse, and um, I remember the police. Someone had got killed right outside my like, right outside the house, like some fourteen year old kid. Um, Someone drove by and shot up the neighborhood, like, and he got hit in the head. Oh, I remember I ran out of the house to, to just, to, you know, when you're young and you grew up in a bad neighborhood or, or, or wherever you grew up, you hear gunshots, you're going to go outside after everything's quiet for the neighbors to see what happened. So we went over there to see the body, most of the neighbors, and they were just laying there. You saw it? Yeah, we, we saw it, man. How old were you when you saw it? 20, 21. Okay. But then some of us stood there too long, so the c police took our names. You know, we fucked up. We he took our names to see if we knew anything. We didn't know anything. So the police are going the next week door to door looking for everybody in that list of their names to see who did what, to see who knows what. And I didn't know. I've forgotten that they took my name down. So I was, I thought they were looking for me for something I already did. You know. <laughs> For some other shit. So as soon as they opened the door, I ran, man. I ran out of the back door. You did? And, and, and I ran. And Did they chase you? No. But I thought they didn't turn around. But I live in the housing projects where they had clothes hangers on top of the roof to, to, um, to hang up your clothes. Mm -hmm. So you go up the third floor. One, in every other building, you go upstairs to the roof. So I ran to the building and I ran upstairs and I hid for a while, and then they left. Then they came back the next day, but this time when I went out the back door, they were they were in the back door. <laughs> 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 
They <laughs> just waiting on your ass. They handcuffed me in the house. And I didn't do anything. They handcuffed me in the house, and it took me to see a bunch of photos. You know, I didn't recognize anybody. I didn't know anybody. I didn't. I mean, I, 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 I wasn't that far as a as a how you say like I'm not a I wasn't a I wasn't a witness. You know, yeah, yeah. I was just being nosy. Right. <laughs> There's a big difference. <laughs> I'll be nosy. I'm just being you know, nosy. I, I, know I went out there to look. <laughs> and for anybody out there who's listening, something bad ever goes up somewhere, don't stick around, man. Leave. Just get the fuck the, out of there. Leave, man. Don't go back. To the, see the cops it. will show no. up and start asking for everybody's ID. You might have a warrant. That's the day you go. So the police took me all the way to the Hollenbach Division Police Department. They showed me a bunch of photos. I said, I don't know anything. I don't know. He goes, I was watching Saturday Night Live, you know, 11.45, you know. And they let me go. They drove me back. This is how, bad, how mean those police were. They, drove, they dropped me out in front of everybody. Nah. They, <laughs> <laughs> they let you out in front of everybody. <laughs> and they told me, thanks. Yeah. Oh, that's a death sentence. <laughs> So as soon as I got out, only oh, one, one person saw up. me come out of the car. He goes, oh, <laughs> fool, you snitching now? <laughs> and, I said, and I just put my head down. I said, no, man. These fools, this, I lied. I said, these fools um, were going to drop me off in the wrong neighborhood right now. Enemies, right in the wrong neighborhood. So I told them, just drop me off right here real fast. I know those people. And they said, you fucking liar. They didn't believe me, so but there was only one guy who saw me, so so um, I was never around. My my girlfriend would always, always go look for me, you know, like where are you at? You know, come home, and um, I was never home, so she ended up meeting somebody, and they were like cheating behind my back for like a year and a half. I never noticed. I never thought to think that somebody's gonna, you know, you no one has ever cheated on me before. You know, you don't know what cheating is. Yeah. You know, I never cheated. Like, I didn't ever, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I didn't chase women. And um, I chased a nightlife. No. <laughs> <laughs> I like to boogie. Uh, so, uh, I love being out, man. <clears throat> For me, like, I didn't have a, I didn't go to the high school partying. You know, I didn't party in high school. I didn't go to college to party. So, you know. For me, man, listening to like Led Zeppelin two with my Native American friends and drinking beer all night and that was the life, that was man. Enough, yeah. You, you you think those like when you when it's happening at that moment, you're at the moment, you think it's never gonna get better than this, man. Like you don't think you're gonna be forty one day and then fifty right. or thirty. Yeah. So she ended up cheating on me and she didn't ran off with that guy. I never saw them again. And your kids. Yeah. And what did you have? Boy, but, girl, bo two boys? A boy and a girl from her. Okay. But this is funny how, how deep she was in cheating. She came, she brought the guy over to the house and said that was my cousin. And we're going to go to Texas. And then really we're going to go to Texas. I helped her load. I helped this guy, the, the guy she was sleeping uh -uh. with, load all her stuff inside his car. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> You helped her pack up and leave. <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. That sucks. Dude. It was hurtful oh, back then. Oh, that is hurtful shit right but, there, man. Dude, and then like when I That's talk about it now, cold. my saving oh, grace is this. Like, I didn't give him gas money because I held back. <laughs> that was where you drew the line. I drew a line, bro. <laughs> like, in my back of my head, I was thinking, should I give him gas money? <laughs> Dude, not only that, she she gave me like a hug in front of him and a kiss. Told me she loves me. And took the kids. Took the kids. Your kids. Your kids and her, his car. With this dude and To Al. Mexico, I mean, El Paso somewhere. And gone. Imagine though, man, if I would have given him gas money, he could have had a, a, a whole, three comedy specials based on that. <laughs> like... He would have had T-shirts, bro. It would have been memes. Yeah, he would have had. It would have been not only was that fucking his chick. <laughs> this guy gave me gas money. Even the sound guy is laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. 
That's terrible, dude. That is Isn't like that crazy? So then what? You don't try to track her down? No, man. I, when, when do you find out what that she's her was, cousin um, and she's been cheating on you and all that? When does that come out? Um, When she, when she started, when well, she found out, I, I found out she was cheating um, because the guy told me. <clears throat> he did. He told me, right? When? He told me right after they had broken up, like, you know, because oh. he, he, he felt bad. And I remember her like, like, I know you fucked your back up that day loading up the truck. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> I got something else. He goes, I couldn't take it no more, man. <laughs> he goes, when I, when I was having an orgasm, it wasn't feeling good no more. <laughs> He's guilty. He goes, I got to tell you, homie. <laughs> he showed me photos oh. of her, to him together, and I was like, that can't be her. She never that happy. <laughs> you know, like, I try to joke around, you know, make a, yeah, make a, make a joke about it. I remember when she told me, man, when when I confronted her, she, she wore glasses. And I remember, man, I was sad, and I just got her glasses, and I broke them in half. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. So, okay, so when did um, you meet the next girl that you have a kid with? No, I went to rehab. You did? Before? Yeah, um, um, I talked about it on um, This Is Not Happening. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I got into a fight with some guy eventually when I was, like, living... You know, doing not doing nothing, you know, and um, I went to rehab for about a year and um, three months. So I lost contact with them the you whole were time. In rehab for a year and three months. For yeah. What? what were you? Crack. Doing? Are you for real? Yeah, man. I was like twenty or twenty-one. So even though you couldn't have been a father anyway. No, point. I started like picking up smoking crack after they left. Oh, you did. That's it. It really fucked you. Damn, dude. Why a year and three months? Why 15 months of rehab? Is it? I was there for like seven months, six months, graduated. <laughs> yeah, they gave me a certificate, bro. Graduated. <laughs> the University of Crack. University of Crack <laughs> USA, man. My diploma was rolled up real thin, bro, so you could snort it. <laughs> you could snort it. <laughs> For real, man, those heroin addicts at my graduation clapping and hitting their arms. <laughs> so yeah, you, I was there for about a year, but then I, I I went back home. But wait, I'm sorry. You said like seven months you're there or whatever. And, and like, is it because it's that drug is that powerful and that addictive that you they can't let you out yet? No, 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 no. I, I volunteered. Okay. Some of these guys that were there, they were, they, they were sent by... Um, by the court, you know, or like they were called um back then. They were called N numbers, I guess. I guess you, when you get locked up, you started off with an A, and they run through all the numbers. Then it's B. So I guess when I was in my twenties, there were there were at N's. Okay. So they were called N numbers, and there were people that were um, locked up for drug offenses. So they were allowed to go to rehab or go to jail. Six months, six months of jail of of um of uh, rehab. Was four months of sober living, which is nine months, uh, or one whole year of jail time. So these guys jumped on six yeah. months of sober, three and four months but of you sober went living. Voluntarily. Volunteer, yeah. You were like, I need help. I was sent there by Father Greg Boyle from Homeboy Industries. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah he sent me in there. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. And um, I was like the youngest. I can't believe it. back then I was like one of the youngest kids there. I was twenty something, and there was there people there were fifty nine, like heroin addicts. Like man, I was just keep telling myself I don't want to come back at this age. Yeah, yeah I don't want to be this guy. Yeah, man. In the in the area. Yeah. Giving haircuts for five bucks. <laughs> I had a guy dude that he did <clears throat> thirty years in prison. Like he did a, a stretch. He did ten, got out. Without for three months, did another ten, then got out and did another eight. You know what I mean? This guy cut my he 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 gave me a haircut with razor blades. Nah, just straight edge. Like he had a uh, scissors. Yeah. And the all this. Yeah. He did it with a razor blade, dude. Like Man, he was like sixty-two years trust. old, dude. He still had like a he's still boxing, old oh, man. So when I come out of rehab. Father Greg t Boyle tells me, your daughter being baptized today. He tells me out of the blue, oh, okay. So I go over there to the, to the um, rehab, not to, to church. 
Wait, what daughter? She's. I thought they took her to Texas. No, but they came back. Oh, they did. Okay. So they came back. You know, they, they, they were visiting. Oh, oh, oh. They were just. They weren't. It was like a there. Texas trip, okay, you know. But still, gotcha. I, all right. I, it still helped them load their stuff. <laughs> okay. They, they could have went for the the weekend. Eh? <laughs> a little three day weekend down to Texas. Yeah. And okay, um, right. I came out of, re- I came out of rehab, and then I was there like I was home for a while. And um, Father Greg Boyle told me they're, they're baptizing your daughter, and I said, "Really? Okay." So I didn't, I wasn't even invited. You know, I haven't spoke to them in like in a year and a half now. So I just sat in the back, you know, and I watched it all go hap- happen. You did? Yeah, my son. And they passed, didn't even know you were there. They didn't even recognize me. My son passed by, and he didn't recognize me. Dude, what did that feel like? It felt weird. And um, then he I saw my... didn't say hi or reach. Nothing. He just didn't want anybody to know anything. No, he didn't recognize me at all. Like, it didn't even click on him. Oh, this is my dad. Nothing. Like, he saw a ghost. Like, pretty yeah. much, invi- I was invisible. And then now uh, I saw my daughter getting baptized by the the same dude that I, I was, like, watching the dude um, baptize my daughter. And it was, hey, that's the guy who helped load his stuff. Nah. <laughs> I wasn't really. Nah. So you know me, I, I put on my weightlifting belt and see if they want anything else to get packed. <laughs> you guys need help out of the church. Dear. So I, I went over there, man, and I walked to the church where Father, where they were baptizing her. Like before, like they were gonna, about to congratulate them. So I just walked over there. I, I didn't even look at the people looking at me because they thought they were going to go over there like kill somebody, right, I guess. yeah, yeah. yeah. They thought I would do something violent, you know, but that that was like the farthest thing from my mind. I went over there and I just held my daughter for a little while and I gave it back to them. What was that like? Weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I just gave it back to them and I went on my way. And then when's the next time you saw them? Like 18 years later? 17? What, 18? All right, so that's what I want to talk about because now... Obviously, in that eighteen years, you have a, a third child. Is that a, a you have a boy or a girl? Yeah, I had a boy. Okay, when, how long after your daughter's baptism do you have your next son? I don't know, man. Like six years, okay. maybe. And and how do you, what happens there? Why do you? Why are you not in his life? Well, I'm in his life, but all, always. Yeah. Oh, the whole time you were okay. Yeah, we lived together, and then like I would see him on the weekends, and I would take him to the laugh factory. You wait would? The, yeah, wait with Brother Woods. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he got to see a lot of stuff. Okay. He knows his dad. So you've been in his life the whole yeah. time, but you were separated from your other two kids for another 18 years. So recently, or somewhat recently, you reconnected, right? Yeah, I think like in 2007 or six or How? eight. How? What happened? On Facebook. How? Who Who made the connection? My what? daughter did. She reached out? Yeah. How old was she at the time? I don't remember. 16, I think. Okay. Or 17. And what was the first message? I don't remember. She called me, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I remember she added me first. Because I remember I made a bit about it. I said, yeah, I met my daughter on Facebook. She left me a comment. We didn't get the child support. I had to block that bitch. <laughs> you just came into my life. You're starting drama, bitch. <laughs> you just hit day one. <laughs> Your first day. Yeah, not changed. <laughs> you were just like your mama. So what happened? She called and said, did you know who it was right away? No. What's the? Do you remember what she said to you? Oh, she left a message. You don't know me, but such and such. I am your daughter. And then we called. I called her from the... Were you excited or yeah, nervous? Yeah, I was, I was doing a show at... Um, I remember I was doing a show in Orange County with um, Edwin San Juan. Yeah, it was San Juan. It was a good to, night. I had a good set. Did you talk to her before or after the show? No, before the show. I'll bet. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet you were excited to take the stage after that. How'd the conversation go? It was it a good call? I don't remember, man, but I remember telling my friends, hey, man, I just spoke to my daughter. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't know. They didn't know shit. You hadn't talked to her for 18 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're probably like, that's nice. Good, yeah. good for you. So then <clears throat> did your son come around quickly as well, or was it the, your daughter first? And then it, was my, it was my daughter first, yeah. How long before your son was reaching out? Um, my son and my daughter had been coming to see my mom 
before okay. I met them already. All right. So then uh, one day we all met up. Where did you living, meet? I was living in I was living on Second and Main. Yeah, I was living on Second and Main. I remember I was sharing a loft with another comedian. That shit was expensive. You talking about Ooh, Santa Monica? No, I'm um, downtown oh, LA. Say, yeah. Just at the old nine or eight. And what's the first thing? Did you see your daughter first or your daughter and son together when you finally met up? No, I saw them both. And where did you go? I don't remember where we went. We went to go eat. Wait. I don't remember. Do you remember what you talked about? No, we didn't talk. We just, we just, nah. We just took quiet. We just hung out. It was a quiet meal. Yeah. That does that feel weird? No. Nah. No, <laughs> that felt. I didn't have much to I say. Feel, <laughs> you ain't talked for eighteen years. I guess it felt normal. <laughs> yeah, man. <clears throat> Okay, so you reconnect with your children through social media. Yeah. And what is the relationship like now? Are you guys all spending time together? Are you around each other? Do you see each other more? Oh, when I was living at the loft, my it was my son's birthday, and he wanted to have a um, a um. No, we're gonna go have Thanksgiving at my mom's house. So my daughter came over, and we helped. She helped me clean up my whole loft. And we baked the cake, so I thought that was the first time we ever did anything together. That's nice. We baked a strawberry cake. Yeah. Like a good ass fucking strawberry cake, <laughs> man. I read the whole recipe, bro. Like, <laughs> I let my daughter know that I know how to cook. So it was like, bow, we went to a mom's house, just her and I. And um, that was that one time. And we had a birthday party at my, my loft. For my son, I remember that because he wanted chicken enchiladas. So I had my wife make them, enchilada casserole. Mm -hmm. And we made, I made a, he wanted me to make him a cake and I made him a banana cake. Damn, are you a good baker? Yeah. Are you? I just followed the direction, Duncan yeah. Hines. But you like it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, like a lot of the, a lot of the Duncan Hines, a lot of the other stuff. But when you go, when you go um, look for the, for the cake recipe, it tells you to use the box. So, yeah. and then you add extra stuff to it, like banana, the strawberries. But this is cool. Um, I had a friend that I uh, was a DJ at the time, and he brought his karaoke stuff. And my daughter and I, we sang um, that Grease song, "Summer Love," and yeah. happened this way. And it was good. Like it was like a bonding moment. And another time, my other son and I, we hung out with my daughter. This is funny. Uh, we have a car, so we went on a train. To down to Universal City Walk, and we just hung out, the three of us on a train. I remember asking my son, um, you, "You think um Tuesday we think knows I'm her dad?" What's your daughter's name? Tuesday. Tuesday. All she right. goes, you think she knows? She thinks she considers me her father, and my son says, "Well, she calls you Felipe." <laughs> <laughs> So in um, much, in 2010, I think 2010, I went last comic standing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm at a barbecue. They invited me to a barbecue before I won, and the mom is there, right? And the mom is dating like a a woman now, mm. right? So she's been wrong since day one. Right? <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not my fault. <laughs> she was just trying to find her. It just took a long time to find herself. <gasps> yeah, so she was there, you know, with her. It's funny, the woman that she's with, I, I know her. We grew up together. Like, not grew up like we grew up, mm -hmm. but I grew up seeing her. Yeah. She's really cool. You know, I got nothing against her, you know, but she, I grew I know who she is. You know, she's not the same woman. That I I saw now she looks more like a man now, but I know her. She's really cool. But when they were together, I was like, "Wow, you would think you would meet somebody out of the projects." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! So what was it like for your kids when you so, won last comic? Well, I won last comic standing, 
And I'm thinking, why is there... So the mom filed for child support the next day. Nah, uh yeah. The next day. $118,000 for <laughs> not, not, not right, yeah. No, man, because I didn't pay no child support and those oh, kids were this born. this is all back for two. Oh, okay. I yeah, see. and when you owe child support in California, it's not like other states, it accrues interest. So if you owe like 7000 and you don't pay the whole year, by the end of the year, it's 9000 yeah. And then like you don't pay that nine thousand plus that seven thousand for next year, and I was sixteen plus another three thousand. Just so not, compound. Now you owe twenty thousand. Right. So um She hit you for how much again? A hundred for two kids, man. So um um everybody at NBC was really cool. So they told me that um, you know that they're trying to someone just filed a child support case on you. Nah. And I said and I and, and I and I, I like I didn't know I like I didn't know I was like, say what? <laughs> <laughs> don't go there. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, oh goes, yes, I did. I do have two kids somewhere. somewhere. Then she said, I, well, so um, NBC, like, they coached me because they were cool, man, NBC. They told me to go and get yourself incorporated first, and then we'll write the check to the corporation, and then you can write yourself a check to the child support. You know, that way they won't just grab the whole money and then give me my share. Right, because they could do that. So I give them. I paid my child support, and um, you paid what you owed. I owed not everything. One hundred eighteen thousand. Yeah, that's how much I owed. Two kids. You that was a legit number. Yeah. She wasn't just throwing oh, no, that man. out. Oh, that's man. how much it was. Damn, and you had to pay that. Yeah, man. In one lump sum. One lump sum. Oh man, that's and then I have to fun. pay the ten percent to the agent. <laughs> I'm just seeing you with the glitter coming down and <laughs> shit. This is what people don't know the story. You know bro, what I mean? I'll pay like, in glitter, bro. The agent. <laughs> I was like, I was like pops from regular show, <laughs> except he paid with lollipops. <laughs> I was paying with confetti, bro. Oh, I was man. I was cash broke for the first six months, like because I'm you know because I couldn't get a a bank loan. I couldn't open up a, a checking account or bank because of the child support because it had to clear. You right. know, so um, that happened, and my kids and I we we started like talk, getting talking to each other more. I invited my my son to a to a uh, a show. I took my daughter to a show, and she loved it. And I had a show in Visalia once in two thousand eight. I think before Last Comic Standing. I know it was 2008 because Brad Williams, was, he was the headliner. And I was the opener, somebody else was featuring. No, I was a, I was a featured act and um, some other cool comedian was the opener. And I remember it was fun, man. We were all stood in the same hotel room. My son, my three kids, and oh, my, yeah? my wife and her son. And we all were in the same, like, we drove to the show together. And I thought that was cool. Yeah, that is cool. Let's take a quick break and tell you about our first sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now, we all know how a VPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But I didn't know this until recently, and it's taken my TV watching to the next level. You can use a VPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Over the weekend, I used ExpressVPN to binge Doctor Who on UK Netflix, all right? It was so simple. I just fired up the ExpressVPN app, I changed my location to the UK, I refreshed Netflix, and boom, that's it. ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. So. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. Now, just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. You, if you love anime, you can go use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. Japanese Netflix, y'all. But it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service, Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows is it's ridiculously fast. All right, there's never any buffering or lag, and you can stream in HD no problem. ExpressVPN is also compatible with all your devices, your phones, your media consoles, your smart TVs, and more. So you can watch what you want on the go or on the big screen wherever you are. If you visit my special link right now, expressvpn.com slash honeydew, you get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's three months for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash honeydew. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash honeydew.
Now, let's get back to the dupe. What's your favorite thing about being a dad now at 50? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's your honesty. <laughs> I mean, I I love them around. You know, um, my daughter, uh, my well, how son, old my, are they all now? My how? son just had a he, he had a baby. Oh, you're a grandfather. Yeah, my my damn dude, are you? My Congrats. son had a baby like in he's seven or eight years, nine years old. Okay. And my daughter, she just came back from Sweden. Well, you've been a grandfather. Yeah, my daughter came from. She was living in Sweden for like a year and two years. She had a baby and. Her 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 man her baby daddy lives in Sweden, so they were both. She was living in Sweden for about two years. Then she came back during a pandemic. Crazy. Yeah, it is. But it was crazy, man. Because my daughter's sick right now, or my daughter has um, she has um, she told me what well, was crazy, man. Like we we're talking on Zoom. My, my my wife, my daughter has um, breast cancer. Oh no! And it's it's like terminal. It's like on her, it's in her bones already. No. Yeah, it wasn't a, it was the saddest Zoom. What? The saddest Zoom call ever. Your daughter's got terminal breast cancer right now. Yeah, they At gave her age? like ten years to live, or fifteen. There's nothing with they medication. Can do it. What's with, in her bones? I don't, I don't know about breast cancer. I, I, you know, but cancer itself. I mean, she's yeah. got ten to fifteen. How old is she now? She's eighty nine. Thirty. Oh man, that's young. She cut it young, man. So when you ladies listening right now, if you're in your twenties, go check them boobs. Yes, get your titties checked. Cause she didn't find out till like uh, she just felt like weird, you know, one day, and then all of a sudden they told her. But um, she was living in Sweden because at first when they found out, I said, "Stay in Sweden, everything's free." Yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Dude, I said, "Stay in Sweden, <laughs> they don't everything's beds for you here. Stay in Sweden, everything's free." <laughs> and um. All her chemo was done in um in um Sweden, her medicine and all that. I don't think she paid a dime. Wow. And um, that's the way it should be. But the hardest part was for her because she had um she needed a place to stay. Now I don't think her her man worked it out. Dude, there were no apartments in Sweden. Really? There's not one apartment in Sweden. Like it is easy. Like you know, there's no apartments in Sweden. Like it's not like a, like there are people when people in Sweden ho have an apartment. It's like those people like in New York who never leave. Right, they hold it. For they hold it. They, like even if they move somewhere else, they still hold the apartment, and it's illegal to um, sublet it. But people still sublet. But there are no apartments in Sweden, so that's why she came back. So now, are you trying to spend as much time together as you can? Yes, I and mean, we spend um, our first Christmas together. Wow. All right. Yeah, her and my grandson. Was that nice? Did you, did you have a good time doing that? It was cool. It's cool, too, because you have a grandson that probably still believes in Santa, and you get that all over again. He's two, yeah. And, um, yeah. I have to buy my daughter a wig because she's bald yeah. now. A cool. I mean, that wig was expensive, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you should get her a wig. Like, you should sell your That's hair. what I was thinking the other day, man. <laughs> yeah, like, dude. I was thinking, like, I was, like you know, I, I was watching this video about, like, somebody – Someone's daughter has breast cancer, and he, he caught his hair bald. His, hawk, his hair completely bald, like, in honor of his daughter. And I'm thinking, well, what the fuck? Are you too cheap to buy her a nice wig or what? <laughs> I'm keeping my hair, motherfucker. <laughs> you got good hair, dude. You have actually great like, hair. When I see that, like, uh, when people cut their heads <laughs> off in honor of somebody, yeah. it ain't going to help, all right? Sorry. I'm here to tell you right now. Get a wig. Get a wig, man. That was nice you were able to do that. That's the great thing about it, you know, that um, I'm going to point my career where I could just do that, you know. Yeah. Have this happened, like, before last comic standing, not only that, honey, I'm going to shave my pubic hair off. <laughs> I'm giving I'm you gonna show my, hair. I'm going to shave my eyebrows out. <laughs> I'm going to look like fucking powder. Oh, uh, that's good that you're there for, though. Yeah, I'm there. We talked. When my daughter left, my daughter came um, to visit me last year during Christmas, before Christmas. And um, we got along, and we talked every single day. Like, when she went back to Sweden, before she came back, every day, like, good morning, how are you? It's weird, because in Sweden, they have, like, a dark dark, dark nights yeah. forever, you know? I thought, I, I don't know. What, I like that live, Alaska, like, like yeah. 23 hours of darkness or something like that? Yeah. So my daughter and I, we, like, speak every day. 
since um, the last time we saw each other. So yeah, she's here now. But when she went to um, when she went, this is the first time I told anybody about that. By the way, I don't want people like like, oh, what can we do? What can you do? Yeah, you can just love hard and live that's it, and, man, and enjoy each other. Tell jokes. That's it. That's what this show is all about. Like I, I, I made her laugh the other day. I said because um, I have a bit now. You know, like some because you know, like one of my shows was sold out, and somebody sent me this email. He said, "Can you help me out, man? We're trying to get to your show. It's my wife's ninth anniversary, and she has lupus. Her mother died of COVID nineteen. My brother was killed in a drive by shooting." Is there any way you can help us out? And I emailed that guy back. I said, I'm sorry, man, but I cannot have that much bad luck in my show. <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, I don't I'm know. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm scared to be around. I, I, don't do, I don't do spiritual cleansings, man. There are not an egg big, big enough to roll over on your bad luck family. <laughs> I, can't be, I can't be having a good time, bro, while everybody <laughs> laughing. I look over there, and you're, you're feeding your mom, bro. I just not, I cannot. So if someone dies on the way home, I'm gonna be blaming your fucking <laughs> shitty family, bro. I cannot have it. I don't blame you one bit. As you were hitting the list, I'm like, I wouldn't even go near this <laughs> black cat right here. Fuck this shit. And I'm like, they're like, what the fuck? Eh? Hey, don't bring that shit to me. Do y'all what, live what under a ladder? I mean, god damn. <laughs> I saw Apocalypto, eh? <laughs> Fear is a bad disease. I would have been the same. I'd be like, good luck to you, brother, because it sounds like you're in for it. Uh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> oh, I can't be looking at your family over there, bro, and somebody has saliva, bro. Now, how about your kids? Does your Do your all three of your kids get together? Do they talk? Yeah, they they do actually. My yeah. my uh, my sons they 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 um, text each other. That's good. And their kids? Do all your kids have children or just one just daughter? Two of them. Just two. Just two okay. of them. And that's great. You're a fucking grandfather. You got a lot going on, and you got time. That's the other thing. You have time. Yeah, man. You know, you have time. You don't have to wake up one day and it's oh my god. You've got time. And now, what do you do with that time? And how do you make that count? I know, man. It's, Ever since the pandemic, I've just been taking my acting class on Tuesdays on Zoom. Mm -hmm. I got to be on Superstore for three more episodes Very before nice. they canceled the show. Good. And um, I did a movie with The Guest House last year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. And that Steve Byrne movie. Mm -hmm. But I did a movie during the pandemic with a, a Mexican actor named um, Omar Chaparro. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a box. It was good, man. Is it a comedy or? It's a serious movie. Is it? I, I noticed it was a serious movie when um, they started taking taking away my funny lines. Oh, really? They were yeah. written first and then they started scaling back? And yeah, and then the scene got too intense. And then my, I was like ready for my line. And then my my funny line would look more like in bad taste. Oh, yeah. Like, there was a scene where... where um, some they're, they're 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 yelling at somebody right, and then somebody gets beat up, eh? And I'll put to say something like, um, e -e -e. "Brown life don't matter." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that comes across <laughs> in poor <taste. laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> Um, so what goes through your mind? Like, what do you think about? Does, uh, do you think about what you want to do and how you want to spend that time with your daughter? Like what? It, and then you're stuck in a fucking pandemic. So it's not like you can go places yeah, really man. readily. Like, what do you do? I'm more worried about like her safety because, you know, if she catches it, she's right. done. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no coming back. You know what I mean? She has, a, she already has, it'll just help. It'll shorten her time here. Right. So I, um, that's my fear, but um, she 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 she's eighth home right now. She's applying for a bunch of stuff, you know, for um, medical and um, cancer treatment and all that. She's looking for all that stuff right now here in America. Does it make you think about your own mortality and your death and stuff like that? Man, I've done cocaine off the floor, bro. <laughs> 
I should have died a long time ago. truth though i bet it is the truth like when it's time it's your time it's your time believe me yeah i'm like uh i feel like some people like you're like in you're like in this um in this um this the, or the old cleaners you know like they have in new york the old cleaners where you need that number mm -hmm. and that thing just spins and spins and spins and they lost my number bro so I'm just hanging on. Just wait until they figure it out. Like, oh, here it is. Here it is. <laughs> I'm just waiting. But somebody said, you know what? That's my jacket. You know what I've noticed in my life, at least? It seems like death will come in, and it'll sweep. It'll take a few, and then it's gone for a while. And then it comes back, and it's these two or these three, and then it's gone for a while. And I'm like, ooh, I just don't want to be. I don't know when my time is going to be swept up in that little death dust buster. But it comes around and gets I know. Like, if I worry about, like, catching COVID, you know, how good are my lungs, you know? Yeah. Can I hang? Right. I, what can I still hit bowls? What about um, your father growing up? Did you, were you close with your dad? Yeah, my, my dad was always there. My dad, uh, growing up, he, he worked for a company called Pike, P-I-K-E. And he was a uh, uh, arc welder, I guess. Mm -hmm. He wore, he wore the mask. Yeah. And... My dad was my dad worked every single day of his life, I guess. My dad helped my dad was part of the team that that um that um well did the Panama Canal. No shit. The Panama the Panama Canal was a project, an American project, but people think that it was made in the it was built in the Pan Panama. Right. Now man, that that job was most of those metal shop the metal part of the job we're all melt. We're all put together in America, and then they shipped it to United, to Panama to put it I together. I didn't know that. Is that right? Yeah. So they were, assembled here. Or it was then, assembled here in America, and then sent there yeah. to be finished. Yeah. The, no shit. The metal parts were put together in America. The cement was done over there. Gotcha. And your dad was part of that. Yeah. Wow. My mom told me I didn't know. Yeah. I thought he just went to work every day. But that was one of those dudes that would get, that would get dressed up. On my dad would get paid and get dressed up on Friday night, and then we would never see him again till Sunday. Oh, really? He'd just go out and rip it up. That's maybe where you get it, the nightlife. Yeah, man. I, like when my dad had on, when he was dressed up, you know he was not gonna come back. So when do you? At what age for you do you really start getting in trouble? Like, in trouble? Like, what kind of trouble? Well, just in the neighborhood and running with the wrong crowd and, you know. Probably, well. You said you were a usual suspect. What well, age we'll say you that, start um, getting in trouble? All my friends, we st all my friends that were that I grew up with, they are in, most of them ended up being bad. But I, renew, I, I was already running with them since we were 12. Right. So we kind of, like, grew into it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't go... Down as that path that they, they did, you know. How old were you when you first got arrested? I, 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 got, I never really got arrested, man. I got arrested for, like, lying, you know. Like, one time I was afraid, so I used my brother's name. Okay. So I got arrested for his name. You used his name. <laughs> and he had more warrants than me. <laughs> that shit backfired. <laughs> oh, shit. Or I would get, like, a... Uh, I would, I will be in downtown LA and I run a red light, you know, like walking. And there's a cop there that gives me a jaywalking ticket and I throw it away. And then, like, five years later, you know, that's a warrant. I didn't Is even it know. really? Yeah. They put a warrant out for you on that? I didn't know they put a warrant out. Because I don't know how much a warrant was back, how much a, a jaywalking ticket back then was $100. But now they add a 70% a assessment to it. No, a 70% a assessment or a 110% assessment. So you have a warrant for five hundred dollars, but when you get there, with the court charge and everything they do to the warrant, it becomes twelve hundred. Damn, you got to make the money. And if you don't pay it, you're going to jail. Yeah, there on that spot that day when you didn't plan on, you had shit to do later. Yeah. Yeah. So I got lucky. That what that time like, like there were so many people there for like 
for small cases, for small, small offenses, running on a wall, pissing in public, running red lights, jaywalking. That um, the judge came. I remember the judge coming out, and I was sitting there. First of all, I was scared, dude. I never been in jail before, you know. And I remember, man. How old are you? Oh man, I'm twenty. Okay. I was sitting there, dude, and I remember just, just sitting there, in the court, court with a bunch of dudes, and then a bunch of chained up men came in, and they were all wearing red. We're wearing. We were wearing um, civilian clothes, but some people were wearing blue, county jail blues. But these guys came in wearing orange, and they had like some of them had red wristbands. And my dumb man started asking questions. It was over these fools. <laughs> oh man, those are high power guys, and I didn't know what high power was or nothing, dude. So I just I'm just sitting there, you know. So then one of the dudes sits next to me, and he he sits he crosses he sits like a gentleman, dude, like. Everything about him, his posture, everything about him looked like he's been to a lot of high class places. But it just the it was just the way he acts. But he he never been to no high class anything. He was just a gentle guy. Anyway, so we're sitting there chilling in that, and then some black dude is asking people if, if they have zigzags. And I remember I had a zigzag, and he was gonna trade it for an apple, right? So I fuck, I, I, I trade a zigzag for an apple. So I took my zigzag out, and the dude that was just sitting there, like a gentleman, he fucking snatched my hand away from that black dude, and he said the most racial thing I ever heard in my life, right in front of the guy, and um, and he said just don't give like don't, don't give this guy anything, or oh, fuck this guy, right in front of him, fuck this guy, and I just put my hand down and shit right there, and I and, and I didn't do nothing. I just I was scared as fuck. I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave now, unless that guy said I could leave. So <laughs> yeah. So I, I wasn't. I, I didn't know there was prison politics. You couldn't talk to another racial, another race, or nothing like that. So after that, I just learned right away not to talk to anybody. So that dude right there became the only guy I ever spoke to, and he would just he just told me that. Um, but the, man, this guy said some cr- cr- wild. Stuff, man. Like was he a white dude, Mexican dude. Mexican dude. Like, and when you say high power, was he high ranking? No, like, high, they were murderers. That's what I'm saying. They like were all murderers. Oh, these guys were all murderers. All they were, of them. All of them. They just happened to have traffic violations too. Uh, <laughs> so they were out, and that's when they got. They, they all came on. in a bus. They Damn. all came in. A bu- they came in like we were already in jail. These guys came in at four in the morning. And then they were shipped in, but it was crazy, man. Like um, that guy, he didn't. When like as soon as that guy said that, that guy knew it right away, and his eyes said, "I'm sorry," and he just went about his business. How long were you in there? Full eight hours. Eight hours. <laughs> in eight hours, I learned everything there is to know about prison. <laughs> What's the craziest shit, or, or some of the craziest shit you've seen growing up in your neighborhood back in the day? I know you came on the crab feast. You had wild stories of your growing up days. I'm trying to remember. Um, I saw this guy, man. This crazy. There was this guy named Wolf. You know that that's his gang name, his real name. I never knew his real name. This guy was man. This guy was huge. He was like he had like little legs, but he had an like upper body strength. <laughs> he like he had a he had a he smiled. He had a ruby in his tooth. <coughs> a ruby. A, a ruby, like a red, like a like you know, a bling bling. Yeah, yeah. But he had, it, was, it was like a, a, a it was like a, a gold plated around a white part, but inside the white part, he had a red um, ruby. And um, I saw I saw this guy, man, um, and where I lived, there was housing authority, police department, and there was LAPD. Housing authority, they were, they patrol the housing projects. LAPD, the whole city. But Housing Authority goes inside the projects. LAPD cruises outside of the projects. Okay. But the, but um, Housing Authority police, they have the same authority as the police, as the LAPD. They could arrest. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. They could shoot. They, they could, can? Uh, yeah, they have guns. And um, so I'm, I'm just chilling, man, and whatever, man. 
I'm at the, I'm little dude. I'm 12. I'm at the bus stop, just sitting at a bus stop, watching the world pass by. And I see one of Wolf's friends just walking, and he's arguing with a police officer about something. Then a police officer grabs him and tries to handcuff him. And then I see the other police officer. Um, um, that guy Wolf grabs him by the shirt and starts pounding him, man. Wolf's beating one of the cops. Yeah, man, beating his ass, and and then they, the the other cop comes and hits him in the leg. His little ass legs. And he don't even move, bro. <laughs> his legs stood up. <laughs> oh man, and he he stretches a billy club from them, and they're beating the shit out of him, and. Fuck, man. Ow. I practically peed on my pants, man. You were watching this dude. Watching this dude. Down. Watching his violence. I was in shock. I was shocked, man. Like PTSD and shit watching yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going on. And um, I, I, I fucking, like, I, I put it behind me, whatever. Every time I see that guy, Wolf, I would get scared. Like, is he gonna, what, what else is he going to do, you know? I saw him fight. This this black dude named bro, this black dude named um, Ryan, I think, and they were one of those fights, bro. Like, you ever seen the movie, um, those street fights? Like, they live, they with live, Roddy Piper and or everywhere way but loose. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. those kind of fights that last forever. Yeah. And um, I saw somebody pour gasoline on that guy Wolf. What? And that guy said, "Listen, man, if you don't stop, I'm gonna catch, light your stuff on fire." <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that, man. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> let me get and my And this guy get was like, I was, I, was always, I was always there when that guy was about to do violent shit, man. Like, I, I was like always there at the right time for him. And then the, the, how I noticed that he had that ruby was one time he, out of nowhere, man, he just started talking to me. And he told me, you have a girlfriend? And I said, no, I don't have a girlfriend. But I was like 15 or 16 years old then. He goes, you got to eat the pussy. He's, telling, he's like a grown man telling a 16-year-old kid, they got to eat the pussy. And I said, and I asked like a dumbass, how? It's <laughs> 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 oh, a fair question. Wow, bro. <laughs> Keep in mind that there's a bunch of other five other guys drinking 40 ounces, you know, wearing their fedora hats, their trench coats, looking G'd up, man. You know how our 80s gangs are supposed to look. You know, they got their khakis, their Stacey Adams, their hats. They're looking good, man. But this dude over there telling me how to eat pussy, man. Like, you should be over there with your friends. And he's breaking it down, bro. And it was all graphic, man. Like, I hadn't even seen a vagina before. But like showing me, you know, he goes, you gotta, you gotta, actually t- breaking you gotta, it down. You got to lift it up, man. He goes, you got to grab their lips. You got to lift it up. And then a little penis is going to come out. Don't get scared. <laughs> Don't get scared. And I'm like, what? A, she has a, and I'm like, she, and I'm like, she has a penis. Oh, shit. She has a penis too. <laughs> no, it's a clit, mijo. No, he goes, once you pull it up, once you put the wings up, it'll just pop out. <laughs> now it's gone. He goes, and then it'll pop out. It'll just pop out. <sighs> so then he just, then you go like this, man. Like when he, I see the ruby in his mouth. <laughs> and he starts doing it. his tongue, you know. <laughs> That's a, that is a creepy ass way to find out how to eat pussy. Dude. It was gross. <laughs> The wings are killing me. The wings. It's got wings. Yeah, man. But the craziest <laughs> shit I saw was when I was, um, I was leaving um, a Little League game in 1980 or I don't remember the year, but you could look it up. It really happened. Um, oh I, I, I was in San Francisco doing a show once, and there was like a liberal, you know, those, those liberal books, mm-hmm. you know, those um, – Whatever, anti-fascist books, fascist books, communist books, you know, corporate books, whatever, all, all kind of political books. But there was one book there about a guy 
who was killed in my neighborhood, a communist member named um, David something. You can look it up. David Mendez or David, I don't know, but if did, you look it up. Did you know Google him it. or know Pico of Aliso him? Pico Aliso murder of communist leader David. I didn't know he was a communist when I was a little kid. But because, you knew of this guy. Yeah. Okay. I was riding my little my little uh, huffy with a little um uh, little streamers on the side of the thing, and uh, my friend had a PK Ripper, you know, whatever, and we were just cruising, and there were these guys that would come to my neighborhood and protest all the time, but we didn't know who they were. We were too young. They were, we just called them the kids, the the dudes with a red flag, because they would come with a red flag. Okay. And they, but I didn't know they were part of the Communist Party. But they would come into my neighborhood and have protests in front of everybody. And then they would pass out food and, you know, and um, check up on kids, you know, like if they had measles or they'll do like stuff like that, you know, like um, they're winning the hearts of the people what they're really doing. Now I know. Back then I didn't know. So they will come in and they'll feed us like, oh, free lunches. Oh, all right. Everybody's coming out. But then they'll start doing their little speeches, and it was all like um, anti-government stuff. But I didn't know this, you know. I learned this later on. But that's what they were talking about. We're watching them st- speak. Then a bunch of gang bam- gang members from an- another neighborhood. I don't know who they were. They were from, but they were from the projects. They get into a fight with all these red guys, you know, a bunch of them. It was like a melee, bro. Like my friends and I, who were there, Rafa, Angel, Jackie, we saw that guy get stabbed, bro. Like he got stabbed to death. Like, right there, like that. Right in front of everybody. Like he got stabbed by this one guy. Damn. And like there's blood everywhere, dude. So we, as soon as we saw that, we fucking got scared, and we took up, we took up with our bikes. <clears throat> to the other side of the projects and um we, we saw like um LAPD, you know and um they were doing they were roughing up someone else in the projects but they didn't know what's going on over there because they didn't know none, none of that so um the next day i went over there because i had summer school and there was blood all over the pro all, they hadn't even cleaned up the blood there was a lot of blood then i saw a couple of communist guy just walking around I guess they were released from jail but I mean I saw what I saw but when I when I read the article in San Francisco they said that the LAPD knew that he was a communist so they killed him wait they said what they the, knew he was a communist and the LAPD killed him the LAPD did it yeah you but, watched what you watched huh yeah they didn't they didn't Wow, but this guy had I, this guy was a leader of the. I didn't know he was a leader of that group. He was. Right. I didn't know that back then, but he was, and he was also. He started another rally somewhere else where where he became known for that, but um. To this day, man, I didn't know there was communist people preaching and I yeah in in Boyle Heights. I in, didn't know in that the either. late eighties, early eighties. I learned a lot today with you, man. Um, something I ask everybody that comes on for the first time is uh, advice they would give to their 16-year-old self. Knowing what you know, knowing what we've talked about today, if you could go back and tell your 16-year-old self something, what would you say? I would was, I was tell my 16-year-old self to start writing now. Yeah, start writing everything that happened to you. I like keep one. a memoir of the things you see, because a lot of stuff I don't even remember now. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm really sorry to hear about your daughter. Oh that's, man, that's, that's okay, news, man. Dude. That's... We're dealing with it, and she's she's um. Every once in a while, you know, I'm gonna lie, man. Like I, I didn't break down today, but you know, because I've been dealing with it for the last four months now, and um, the first time was a shocker because it was like she was sad, you know, and. You know, like you expect, you know, like, so we just, you know, like you want to spend so much time with your kids, you know, but you know, they're, it's going to be limited now and it's kind of sad. And she's got children. Yeah. 
Who she has gonna, a two-year-old. Who's going to be with a single a mom. mom? She's a single mom. A single mom, and um, one thing about my daughter, I know that she's very strong compared to like how I would have handled it. You know, I would have been like, "Fuck this," you know, "Why me?" I would have went, you know, you know how we do it, man. As a drug addict, you try to find any excuse to go back to using drugs. So I'm glad I didn't go back to using drugs this time because yeah. it would have been a perfect time. But um, my daughter, um, we might start a podcast together because she wants to talk about it. Yeah, So dude, we're thinking about doing not, it. That'd be great. So it's, maybe we'll do it because her name is Tuesdays. So we'll call it, we'll call it Tuesdays with Tuesday or something. <laughs> Tuesday, so Tuesday. And, um, dude, also imagine how much you're going to get to learn about your daughter just yeah. sitting there doing that all those years. And I mean, most people never get that opportunity. Yeah. Can I ask you a personal question? Um, will you take your grandson? Who's going to take care of her son? Oh, what are that's plans a, when for my, that? When, I, when my daughter and I, when she told us that she had um, terminal cancer and it was in her bones already. And um, cause at first I thought that okay, breast cancer. Okay, maybe she she might lose a boob. I saw a lady with a with no boobs and she's still alive, but that's like that was not in their bones. Oh, <clears throat> my daughter. Um, she had a plan already about her her um her her baby. She already, she already had planned it out. You know that um she has a best friend who can't have a baby. Uh, that's nice. So right now she's staying with her and her man, so they have a room for her. But I'm also like involved too with the son. Like I, I'm gonna end up taking him too half of the time. Yeah. So I'm gonna have. And you a just son. went through not have being able to have a baby as well. Yeah. Now you get to have a grandson live with you. Mm-hmm. We haven't told my mom yet, but cause she's old, you know. Yeah. And she has Alzheimer's now, so I want to keep telling her. Well, dude, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Ryan Sickler. Going deep with me on this. Do uh, please promote uh, everything again. Your podcast, your merch, put your mask, all of it, Felipe. What's up, Food <laughs> Podcast? <laughs> and go check that out, cocksuckers. It's not about the hee hees and the ha ha's. I ain't going nowhere. I was born in LA. <laughs> if, if if time gets bad for me in LA, I just move to Bakersfield. <laughs> thank you, brother. Thank you, man. You got it. As always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, RyanSickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.